Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Razan Pereira. Assam Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonawal has said that he had no reason to continue in his post if he could not protect the interest of the people of the state. He was interacting with the editors of print and electronic media in Guwahati on the prevailing situation in the state following the recent visit of the Joint Parliamentary Committee on the Citizenship Amendment Bill of 2016. A key amendment in the bill seeks to grant citizenship to people without valid documents from six minority communities, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan after six years of residence in India. The 16-member JPC headed by BJP MP Rajendra Agarwal had visited the state from May 7th to May 9th to elicit views from stakeholders on the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016, which was introduced in the Lok Sabha to amend the Citizenship Act of 1955. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will take a closer look at the Citizenship Amendment Bill. Joining me on the program today are A.K. Bhattacharya, Editorial Director of the Business Standard, Rajendra Agarwal, Chairperson, Joint Committee on Bill to Amend the Citizenship Act of 1955, Professor Sanjoy Hazarika, Director, Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, and uh, Trina Roy, Program Officer, PRS Legislative Research. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Bhattacharya, I'd like to begin with you. Why is the Citizenship Amendment Bill in the news in Assam all over again? Well, it's for two reasons. One, uh, uh, its very nature uh, is very controversial because citizenship is very dear to uh, every citizen in this country. Um, so it, uh, it seeks uh, to, uh, to differentiate uh, the claimants of citizenship on the basis of religion. So, which is why it's become very important and controversial as well. And the second thing is that uh, this law, if it is passed, uh, will uh, probably violate uh, the Assam Accord of 1985, which is why it's become more controversial in Assam. Uh, because uh, the indigenous people uh, of Assam may feel... Uh, that uh, the, the Hindus uh, the, who have, may have migrated to that uh, zone, even though they came after 1985 or that year, uh, 1971, I think, 1971, they will be uh, treated uh, as citizen as long as they've stayed there for six consecutive years. So uh, for two reasons, uh, one is uh, this uh, amendment uh, conferring citizenship has been, is being proposed to be made on the question of their religion, uh, which is uh, controversial. And the second is that it violates the spirit of the Assam Accord of 1985, uh, which had uh, not allowed people who had come to the state after 71 the citizenship rights. Sure, indeed. You know, Professor Hazarika, uh, does the citizenship bill breach uh, the clauses of the Assam Accord? And what does the Assam Accord state? Well, the Assam Accord states very clearly that anybody who came uh, to Assam illegally after 1971 would be deported. And it doesn't really discriminate on the basis of religion. And this is really the critical point. Uh, why should citizenship be granted on the basis of a person's religion? And I think the chairman of the JPC, who is on your program, will tell you that the reactions in Assam have been very strong. And what is interesting is the division between the Brahmaputra Valley and the Bharat Valley, because a lot of, uh, I think, uh, what we would say minority uh, 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 persons in uh, Bangladesh, which would be Hindus in Bangladesh, had come ac across more to the Bharat Valley than perhaps to the Brahmaputra Valley, which has seen uh, migration of another uh, of Muslims of, of Bangla origin. Sure. So I think that's at the heart of the thing, and uh, you you would uh, you would really uh, uh, find it uh, difficult to find a common ground on this, as the JPC chairman himself has said. They're prepared to go back hmm. to uh, get a sense because uh, we'll come into this later again. But uh, you know we need to bear in mind there's an NRC process on the National Register of Citizenship process, which is on the announcement of which will be done in a couple of months. The final rules will be published. That is an extremely tedious, sensitive, and difficult and challenging process facing the state, which is dividing it right down the middle. You don't want anything that will cause greater anger, bitterness, and harm to people 
in this process. Right. You have to stand by the law, you have to stand by the treaties accepted in parliament, and you have to uphold the rights of people, not violate them. Right. Let, you know, let me take the points that you're making to uh, Mr. Agarwal. You know, Mr. Agarwal, the JPC on the citizenship bill just returned from the Northeast. What were your findings? Yeah, definitely, we were there uh, from rather 7th to uh, 10th. Uh, 7th, uh, we were in Gohati. And then 8th evening and 9th morning, we were in uh, Silchar. And again, after that, we went to Medhali, also Shillong. That, is, that was on 10th. So definitely, we were having different views. Now, the views had been made by uh, all those organizations public. So, but uh, as uh, chairman of the committee, uh, I just can't comment directly on those views. But definitely, the views were uh, diametrically opposite also. Barak Valley was uh, favoring the bill, while uh, Brahmaputra Valley was all against uh, the bill. They were very much uh, apprehensive about the outcome of the bill. As the, my good friends has told on this uh, panel also, and that's really the fact. And we feel, all the committee feels, we have before us very uh, uh, sensitive task, very uphill task to accommodate all these views. But uh, one thing I want to say, earlier we have gone to uh, uh, western part of India also, to Rajasthan, to Gujarat. There we also met uh, people. So in, uh, if we uh, think on all India, uh, 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 seal of the bill, then they are definitely uh, very different uh, kind of uh, uh, reactions, very different kind of responses and uh, definitely uh, we are to take consideration into consideration all the views and uh, committee will then uh, take decision what to be uh, there in the report. Okay, so divergent views coming out of Assam is what you're saying, different regions reporting differently to you. Would you be visiting Assam again anytime soon to try and get some kind of consensus? Uh, yeah, yeah, might be, might be. Because uh, the committee felt this, uh, some more people, more organizations from different parts of Assam, say uh, northern part of Assam, they wanted to be before the committee. Uh, although we had already... Uh, called so many organizations to, to Delhi also and they came. We have got uh, quite a good number uh, before the committee earlier. But uh, as the demand was, as the uh, expect expectations were there, uh, we might see, uh, we, we might go again to uh, some parts of Assam and of course to Tripura and all, all other uh, places uh, where the stakeholders uh, regarding this bill are. Uh, so we will uh, think to go to these places. Okay, Professor, I can see you uh, putting up your hand. I, I, I think you want to intervene. Go ahead, make your point. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that in Meghalaya also, the, the view, uh, I believe, of the, the JC, JPC received was against the amendment, very strongly against the amendment, whether it's the Khasi Students Union or other groups, that they did not want uh, an accession, uh, they did not want the bill to be uh, passed as uh, the amendments to be passed. That's one. I just wanted to ask the chairman, I don't want to put him on the spot, but since this is a national bill, it's not just for Assam, it's for other parts of the country, for the whole country, can I ask him if a possibility before the JPC is making an exception in the case of Assam and not allowing the amendments, not enabling the amendments to be applicable in the case of Assam, as was done as far as the foreign foreign tribunals bill was concerned, act was concerned, it didn't apply to other parts of India, sure. but only to Assam. So why okay. don't you reverse that? Okay, Mr. Agarwal, do you want to take that question? Are you in a position to answer that? Uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Uh, they gave, uh, it, it's a uh, right uh, that some people suggested that uh, Assam could be kept out of uh, uh, the amendment. And one more idea was there, ki now, right now it is for three countries. Uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh. Could Bangladesh be kept out of this? So there are these views and very uh, uh, pragmatic views rather, I, to, I should say. Uh, the committee will consider all these factors, uh, sitting with the officials of different ministries, uh, all the members of different parties, different stakeholders from states and uh, as I said from parties. Definitely these sensitive issues are to be addressed and we will take care how can uh, some consensus uh, uh, report can come. Uh, we will see it. Uh, definitely, as I told uh, in uh, my first reaction, we have got a very uphill task to 
uh, accommodate all the sensitivity sensitivities and uh, aspirations of the people okay very very frank the answer there by uh, by mr agarwal you know there are several things that need to be taken into consideration all stakeholders will be cons uh, will be consulted and probably some kind of a consensus report will come out sometime soon is what the uh, is what the ch chairperson of the jpc is suggesting let me go across to uh, trina roy now you know as far as the citizenship amendment bill itself is concerned what is it all about really so the citizenship amendment bill was introduced in july 2016 and it amends the citizenship act of 1955 uh, the act actually lays out the process for acquiring uh, citizenship of india and according to the act you can be an indian citizen either by birth by parentage or by residing in the country for a certain time period now uh, the act disallows or prohibits illegal migrants from becoming indian citizens now what we look at the citizenship amendment bill it makes an exception to this illegal migrants it provides a, or makes it eligible for a certain group of illegal migrants to acquire citizenship so uh, this this group of illegal migrants and first i'll just take a step back to explain who are illegal migrants illegal migrants are people who have entered the country without valid uh, travel documents or have overstayed beyond the permitted time so the bill uh, looks at addressing this group of uh, illegal migrants which is certain groups so that is six religions that is hindus uh, buddhists jains parsis christians and sikhs belonging to the countries of afghanistan pakistan and uh, bangladesh will be now eligible for citizenship right you know mr bhattacharya as the arguments on both sides now if you look at assam in particular uh, meghalaya the chief minister has said that he is not going to go ahead with the bill as well that's why he's categorically stated that so there seems to be a lot of opposition from the northeast is the opposition justified well you know i th i think it is justified uh, because uh, for two reasons uh, one uh, it uh, while uh, the the current law let's say uh, in the constitution of the country has something called article 14 uh, which is right to equality now when you have the right to equality it does not allow differentiation of any group of people unless there is a reasonable purpose which is mentioned now unfortunately as far as i know that this citizenship amendment bill does not mention any reasonable purpose for which a differentiation is thought to be made now i think as long as you do not make it very clear that what is the reasonable purpose that not everybody who is an illegal migrant who can become a citizen under this thing will be clear like the assam accord set up set set a date say it's 1971 anybody comes after that will be deported no there was no di differentiation of any groups mm. so but in this citizenship amendment will you are making a differentiation on the basis of the religion now that to my mind is on standing on very weak constitutional firmament and uh, my sense is even though mr agarwal uh, has mentioned that in other states uh, uh, it is re received uh, some support my fear is that it will definitely find face some problem in passing muster as far as the constitutional validity of this law is concerned that's number 1 number 2 is that if you do introduce it in assam and in meghalaya uh, you do uh, you know uh, you run into the assam accord and you also raise the question of whether you want to treat all citizens of a state uh, in the same way without differentiation on the basis of their caste creed or religion so i think on both grounds uh, this bill has a lot of hurdles to overcome even though it might uh, see that assam is the only state or meghalaya is the only state but in many states will actually find this differentiation of groups of people and that being the criterion of granting uh, citizenship to those who have illegally come to this country is something is fraught uh, situation so sure. you know mr agarwal do you want to respond to that the bill itself constitutionally seems to be very fragile and there certainly seems like an uphill task as far as the bill itself is concerned i think the, about this uh, uh, clause 14 of the constitution i think there is an element of uh, religious perse persecution 
persecution on religious basis and uh, the minorities in these countries three countries uh, that is uh, pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh the element of uh, uh, persecution or religion based that is different that makes different thing we of course we are uh, we can't uh, differentiate um, among the people on the uh, basis of religion that's our constitutional uh, commitment but uh, the persecution element of this persecution that makes some difference i think and of course the bill when it is uh, drafted uh, some experts are there they take care of all these uh, constitutional obligations in consideration so on this uh, point particularly i think the uh, bill, uh, it, it will not create much problem problem is uh, about the i think uh, about this assam accord because uh, that was uh, an accord uh, which, between central government with state government all the stakeholders uh, very important people so that was rather an accord between uh, people of assam so that is a big problem uh, and a big issue may i will i should not say problem that big issue before the committee and of course uh, uh, nrc which is been uh, conducted now uh, <clears throat> under supervision of supreme court that's also one very important thing because say uh, by end of june uh, the register should be completed then uh, which number is kept out of that and what could be done uh, about those people that's a big issue before the uh, committee and we are to address these things but uh, as i said uh, regarding this uh, uh, 14 uh, uh, clause 14 i don't think that becomes very very uh, big issue uh, as i think okay you know uh, uh, professor uh, hazarika as far as uh, you know the bill in assam is concerned the ruling bjp itself seems to be divided the, what what kind of a political fallout can we expect from this you know you quoted the chief minister saying that he uh, you know basically saying that he has no business to stay in power if he cannot protect the interests of the people of the state we must remember that uh, sarvananda sonowal was the asu president a member of the agp and an mp of the agp before he joined the bjp a few years ago so there is a history to his life in the movement as a leader of the movement against illegal migration it's not just something that he's talking about since he became chief minister and everybody would do well to remember that that's one the second thing is that as far as and i'm glad that uh, mr agarwal the honorable chairman of the jpc referred to this in his last comments that uh, the nrc process is also on the uh, final or uh, the, the results will be out on uh, the citizenship issue uh, in a few weeks and i am sure that the jpc is constrained by that and the potential fallout of that which is not going to be easy at all because if the numbers are less than what some groups feel then there will be agitation if the numbers are more than what some groups feel there will be agitation from another quarter so it's a catch 22 situation in assam it's very tense and it's and it's very very difficult Uh, on on the point that was uh, made early about article 14 it just says the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the laws within the territory of india it doesn't talk about indians there and more than that is article 21 which is that no person shall be deprived of his life or liberty except by due process of law again no nationality is mentioned here so whatever we do whatever we is done whether it's by the jpc or the process that's ongoing it cannot be in violation of the basic tenets of the constitution sure it must uphold them sure i think that's that's something that people i think that's something that mr agarwal has very categorically stated that it's not going to it's going to uphold uh, you know uh, the 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 constitution itself and it's not going to go against it because there are very serious people are putting things into place here taking the discussion forward you know uh, the professor spoke about history trina let's talk about a little bit about the history of the bill itself what's the background of the citizenship bill so if we look at the citizenship amendment bill uh, in uh, a related development to it was in 2015 and 2016 the central government had come out with two notifications which also uh, was addressing the same group of people that is the people belonging to these six religions from the three countries uh, what the uh, 
two notifications uh, said were that people, uh, illegal migrants belonging to these six uh, religions and from these three countries will not be deported or imprisoned. And that means that uh, they'll be exempted from the Passport Act and the Foreigners Act. Uh, after that, in 2016, this bill has come up and it is uh, making them eligible, the same group of people eligible for citizenship. Uh, it was introduced in July and now the bill is, uh, as we know, uh, with a joint committee. Uh, the bill was referred to a joint committee, I think, in August uh, 2016 itself. Sure, sure. Taking the discussion forward, Mr. Bhattacharya, which are the states that have this migrant problem and why? Well, you know, his, his historical reasons, I mean, you know, you have all the, um, the, the, the border states, so to say, you have the migrant problem. Uh, you, uh, till recently, uh, used to have a problem even in, in, in Western Punjab side. Uh, Rajasthan has the problem. Uh, you have Tamil Nadu, uh, you had the migrant problem. Uh, but, of course, uh, in terms of the intensity, uh, the, the northeastern states and the West Bengal, and even to some extent Bihar, these all these states uh, have had uh, these uh, migrant problems. And it is not just these states, because once you uh, enter uh, the Indian territory, you can actually, there's a free movement uh, is possible. So therefore, it is, um, you know, m m migrant workers or migrant, the illegal migrants, is a problem uh, that uh, is there for any any government to tackle, but <clears throat> to tackle this problem uh, in the form of this bill is probably uh, uh, is uh, not uh, the right thing to do at this point in time. Particularly uh, as I see that it has run into uh, the the into the 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 Assam problem, the Meghalaya problem to some extent. Uh, and also uh, because uh, there are uh, voices of protest uh, uh, emerging on the question of whether uh, you, you can have a law which uh, uh, differentiates a group of people uh, on the basis of their religion. So my, my sense is that uh, yes, there is a problem of um, uh, illegal migrants, but that problem uh, cannot be tackled by framing a law that differentiates people on the basis of their religion. Sure. Professor, that having been said, how do we tackle the problem going forward and why haven't we been able to tackle the problem thus far? You're asking me? Yes. Well, for one thing, uh, you know, the whole idea of deportation uh, presumes that there is a deporting country to whom you can send people. The, and uh, in the initial stages of the Assam agitation, it was detection and deletion and deportation. Detection of illegals, de deletion from the electoral rolls, and deportation ostensibly to Bangladesh. Well, Bangladesh says we have no nationals living in your country, you can't send them to us. So, and I think strategically, the this government certainly has come to a very strong and stable relationship with Bangladesh as far as the geopolitics and uh, the security of the Northeast Bangladesh and the region is concerned, which is a very salutary thing, very important thing. But uh, at the local level, uh, the ruling party keeps going harping on this issue of uh, deletion and basically depriving people of the rights to, to vote and so on. Now, one of the problems that you know, we, are, we are seeing uh, creating, is being created, is the, the entire notion of s statelessness, you know? Yeah. And this is going to be a real problem in the, in the years to come, which will draw attention from not just domestic uh, uh, groups, but also international organizations, whether it's the UNHCR, uh, the uh, IOM, or the Office of the High Commissioner on uh, Human Rights. So we have to be increasingly aware that the eyes of the world are on us, especially as after what's happened in the neighborhood in, in Burma and in Myanmar and Bangladesh. Sure. So we need to be extremely careful of the bigger picture, not, not just of what's happening right now. Indeed. All right. And Mr. Agarwal, uh, how does the center and the state governments deal with this problem? 
What are the options really? That, that, that's the main issue. That's the main issue. For that, uh, uh, we have to sit uh, again and again. Because uh, uh, as uh, my friend uh, just uh, told me this, uh, there will be so many persons, so many people who will stand stateless. What will happen to them? How to accommodate them? Only 70 odd people were identified as foreigners. But uh, those people even that small number could not be deported. But we just don't have that type of bilateral uh, uh, understanding uh, among uh, with, with Bangladesh. And that, that is the real problem. So we will see, uh, we will sit uh, again with the state, with uh, the stakeholders, all the stakeholders, small and big. Uh, one thing I want to say, just you will say, I was when uh, this uh, Shillong, our committee was in Shillong, one uh, young man from, uh, I think he was from uh, Manipur. He was just saying, oh, this is a very small state, oh, this is a very small ethnic group. So I just intervened. Manga, you might be small, what are you talking of? Uh, I just told him, I is very small organ of the body, but I is very important. That I want to say, every single uh, small group, big group, every individual, we will try, we will try hard to accommodate his problems, his concerns, that much I can say. And sure. I, I believe that we will de uh, definitely get some way to solve this, these issues. Okay. Is there a solution in sight, in sight really? I think there should be because the problems uh, are human and solutions are also human. Okay. All right. Quick closing comment from uh, Trina Roy on, you know, uh, how does the Citizenship Amendment Bill propose to change the Citizenship Amendment Act of 1955? So, uh, I'm going to break this down to three things. Uh, A, the Citizenship Amendment Bill amends the Act to make uh, it's eligible for that group of sit uh, illegal migrants to uh, acquire citizenship. Now, under the Citizenship Act, one of the requirements for acquiring citizenship is that a person has to reside in India for 12 months and previous 11 uh, years previous of the last 14 years. Uh, with regard to the illegal migrants, the group of illegal migrants, this 11-year period is relaxed to 6 years. Another thing that the bill does is with regard to OCI card holders, uh, the bill provides a ground for cancellation of OCI card holders and the ground is under violation of any law. So these are the broad things that the bill is looking to amend in the act. Okay, great. All right. Uh, on that note, then we'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.